Good afternoon, folks. John Graham here, coming to you from the Church of Marion. Uh, video today is going to be talking about the D-plane. Uh, I'm going to try and give you some real specific information on what it does, how it works, and hopefully show you visually what's going on. Um, if you have any questions uh, on this, I've got a bunch of blog posts on my website, johngrahamgolf.com backslash blog that you can check and look at when we're done here. But this is going to be the visual part of what's going on when the club and the ball hit each other, what really determines where the ball is going to start. So basically the, you know, the D-plane is a, a phrase coined by Theo Jorgensen in his book The Physics of Golf that is describing what the ball is going to do when the club face runs into it. And, uh, and what I have here is a, is a triangle um, to represent a possible outcome. Um, and the way you want to picture this triangle is the ball being at this corner, closest to the camera. The bottom edge here is the direction the club path is moving. Uh, in this particular case, because it's flat to this table, this is a level hit, level to the ground. And then this angle here is going to be the loft on the club face. Um, you know, the easiest way to picture that would be you know, a club face and a lie angle tool, you know, like so. It's going to be pointed somewhere in space and directionally as well. Um, that's the top edge. So the, I'm using the side of this table here as the target. And I'm going to start with what a straight shot would look like. Here's my ball at the edge of the table, target line, my club path, level to the ground, and directly along the target, this triangle hopefully looks straight up and down on that camera. The club face points above the target line. Uh, what you can't see in the camera is this blue line here which actually represents where the ball starts, the height-wise. Uh, the loft is this edge, but this, this other line here is where the ball actually begins because uh, energy is lost due to friction um, during the collision and things of that nature. Uh, so they don't, they're not exactly the same. The ball doesn't start exactly where the loft of the club is at the hit. It's something less than the loft. But from a straight-on shot, you know, that less loft is still on the target line. These three all line up. The actual loft, where the ball starts, the direction of the club, and we get a straight shot. The axis on the ball would be directly horizontal. You know, the line on this ball would be level to this table, and it would intersect the plane while it's flying as it goes up. You know, obviously it's going backwards, but the axis tilt on the ball and the tilt on this plane is the same. In this case, it's just vertical, the plane, so the axis tilt is perpendicular to that, horizontal. Now, what happens if, you know, on a particular shot, let's say I get the path just right, but I get the club face a little to the right. I'm just going to kind of tilt this board a little to the right. Still kind of hard to see, but you'll start to see some of the white part of this board start to show up in that camera. And the blue line, again, probably still hard to see on the camera. I'm going to turn a little bit so you can get a picture of it. Is going to be where the ball starts. Now again, because the collision is three-dimensional, you know, this ball is starting somewhere up in the air, but it's also starting somewhere left of where the actual loft is pointed. If I was to shine a light kind of down on this triangle, this edge would cast a shadow, a line, and then this line would also cast another line inside of that one, closer to the target line. Um, that particular line is where the ball is actually going to start relative to the ground. The shadow part of where this blue line is. Now the ball axis is going to again be perpendicular to this plane, so it's going to be slightly tilted and perpendicular to this plane. And the ball is going to travel in this plane 
until it either curves out by wind or some other whatever. Um, as it goes, you know, you can imagine going through this plane as it goes up. The axis on the ball is tilted slightly to the right. This ball is a push fade. Start slightly right of target because the face is to the right of the path. I get a spin axis to the right, assuming a centered hit, and I get a ball that's going to curve to the right. Obviously the exact opposite for a straight path and a club face that points to the left. I've got a line on this side, maybe a little harder to see with the yellow, but the yellow is going to represent a draw shot. Now I've got my club path level to the ground, doesn't happen very much, maybe a three wood. Um, my club face here, my angles, same exact stuff, shining a light on it. It's just that now the axis on the ball is going to be tilted a little bit to the left and the ball will travel up this plane as it heads on out. This would be a ball, it would be a pull draw, pull hook, whatever you want to call it. It's going to start left and go left. Now, you know, what happens for the guy who, you know, swings over the top and hits this big slice but it starts directly at the target? Well, if you can imagine, you know, if I held this at an angle, now I've got the path going to the left, the club face pointed to the right, if I cast a shadow down on this triangle and this blue line, now as I look down on it, was you know, directly on the target, and I'll try to line it up here. There, now from my angle, this blue line on this board is pointing directly at the target. Um, my path clearly is to the left. Club face is clearly to the right of the target the actual loft is, but where the ball starts is this other line. This line, as I look down from here, is directly on the target. This would be a ball that started at the target, curved right. You know, you can imagine the spin axis of the ball would be perpendicular to this, so it's going to be some angle like this, ball's going right. Same thing for, a, you know, a, a straight draw shot. If I have a path going to the right, and I line up that line on the yellow board right with the edge of this table. Here we go, here's a ball starting directly at the target and curve it away. Angle to the axis of the ball again is going to be something like this. Um, this part, I think, you know, is pretty self-explanatory. That lie angle tool pretty much is going to make it pretty simple to understand where this ball is going to start, this upper vector here. This bottom one, this one's a lot more complicated because it depends on the angle the club is coming down when it actually hits the ball. 